Hi and welcome back to the next lesson. So in this lesson we are now going to create the risk groupings. So we will go back into Power BI and I'm going to create a new column here and I'm going to paste this value in here that I've created before just and then talk you through. So we're going to use a switch statement. So this switch statement takes a, let's just um, it's a little bit like an if statement, but I think I, I tend to use it a lot more than an if statement because it's easier to to rather than have, it's it's easier to manage and easier to see, and rather than have nested if statements, it's quite straightforward to put a number of different um, conditional or um, yeah conditional expressions that that look at two values and return a third value. So we've got an expression. In the the way we're going to use it here, that expression is going to be true. Now by putting true as the first as the um, as the first argument for this expression, what that does is it forces the switch statement to accept whichever of the following arguments, and they come as pairs, a value and a result. So we can see here, I click on here, that's a value, and then that's a result. You can see that's highlighted too. So whichever one of these becomes true first is the value that gets as is the result. Whichever value equates to true the corresponding result is the result that's returned by the switch statement and by definition this particular measure. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to use this risk ranking pre-mitigation pre and if it's bigger than 15 then we're, we're going to return this value here one and it's a text string one dot high and that corresponds to the rules that we had in place. The next one we're going to look at is if the work order risk ranking is less than four, it's going to be low. And or less than and equal to four, it's going to be low. And then finally, if it's none of these, we're going to return the, the value, which is the default, if none of these are true, which is going to be medium. Because if it's not high and it's not low, the only other value it can be is medium. So that is going to be the simple DAX we're going to use to return that. I'm just going to click that button there. And we can see that we've now got a high risk grouping here. Now it's because I've got a filter on here. So let's just clear that filter. Uh, we'll just select all. I'll clear filter. And let's go back here. Yep. So we can see here that this one, we've got high, medium and low, first of all. Now I've put a one at the start, a one, two and a three at the start here because it just makes it a little bit easier for we're sorting this. Now there's another way we're going to sort things. And I will show you that as we go through the course when it's appropriate, but this just makes it easier for sorting these when we're using um, tables and, and bar, bar charts, etc. Um, so the medium is it's a six, so it's, it falls within the medium because it's n not four or below and it's not above 15, so it must be in between, so it's medium. And let's get one that's, that's high, just to confirm that they're Broadly speaking, it's it's okay. So it's the pre-mitigation, 15. I'm going to have a quick look at these. We should only see yeah, 15, 16, 20, and 25. So these are all high. So that's great. That looks to be working. So let's do the same for the risk grouping post-mitigation. So we're just going to copy this. I'm going to create a new column. I'm just going to paste that in. And we're going to just change a few of these. Put to this calculated column here, change that to post, and we'll change this to post, and that will give us the risk ranking post mitigation. So that's the next part. Now we will just flick back to our diagram. So we're back here in our PowerPoint presentation. So we're back here in our presentation. And the next step is to go and create a count of the number of work orders that are that meet each of these criteria. So red, orange, yellow, and green, because we need to count these work orders to understand which of these um, to input into the overall risk status for the site. So that's going to be the next thing we're going to do. OK, so let's go and generate a new measure. And to be able to count the number of work orders that are in each of these groupings, 
what we need to first of all do is create a count of the number of work orders in the most recent week. Okay, because we need to make sure that when we are generating this overall status, we're only taking into account the work orders which are currently in backlog, or sorry, currently open in the, the most recent week. Now, we did cover this in the first part when we added in a filter here to make sure we only captured the most recent week because we've got a data snapshot which captures, this table is basically appending each week the number of work orders or the details of the open work orders. Now that's great because it allows us to build a trend and the only problem is we do need to be aware of that when we are creating the reports that show a current status. Okay, because we've so we've got to actively tell the measure or tell the visual and filter the visual to only show the most recent data snapshot. So for this one here, I've shown you one method of how you can do that using this top end method here, filter. However, when it comes to creating a measure, we need to be a bit more clever and we need to be explicit within the measure. So we're going to create a copy of this work order count and it's going to be the work order count for the current week. So I'm going to go and add that in. So here is how we will calculate that. So we're going to create a variable, first of all, that's going to be called the latest week year. So we're going to calculate, and we're going to calculate the maximum value on the across the data table for the week year. And we're going to do that across all of the data. Okay, we're going to go across all of the data. So this calculate statement just allows us to modify the filters, or modify the filter context. And this is what we're going to do. So we're going to go and calculate the max value here across all of the work orders. So we're going to unfilter all of the work orders and find the most recent date. And then that is going to be fed into the next part, which is a result, which is then going to calculate. And the first statement here is a count of the work order data table which has been filtered for only the work orders in the latest week, which is this value here. Okay, so we're going to find what the latest week is. So this is going to be dynamic. This will change as each week progresses. This will only pull back the most recent or the most recent week in this um, data table, the work order data table. Now, it might not be the most recent week. It's the most recent week that there's a snapshot of data. So bear that in mind. But um, this is going to prove back the, 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 the most recent data that we've got and it's going to calculate the number of rows for that week. So just add that in. And just as a means of actually making sure that works, I'm going to take a quick copy of this. Oh, something never quite went right there. Well done. Result. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste it. Sometimes these, ah, I don't want to cut it, I wanted to copy it. And I'm going to go and I'm going to replace the measure in here, with, which will be unfiltered. So we'll get rid of this filter here, and we can see this is going to go and it's going to increase. But what I'm going to do is, rather than use the measure, which is a work order count, I'm going to use the measure, which is a work order count, and I've abbreviated that to W, w count for the current week. And we can see that it's returning the same values. Okay, so I've just embedded that filter into the measure, which is a lot more useful. But I just wanted to show you the easy way to begin with, because I didn't want to get too complicated too quickly. So now I can delete that old old one and we can use this one. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and start to look at the risk rank groups and we're going to count the number of work orders in each group. So let's start with the pre-mitigation. So I'm going to add that in here. And we can see we've got high, medium and low. And we can add that in here and we can see that there in the, the work order count current week there's 24 um, for the risk for the pre-mitigation, uh, there's 474, and then there is uh, 292. In fact, actually, let's do it for the post-mitigation because I think that will be a bit more of a, a match to this. Yeah, so you can see two, 
and then we can see 285 so that I'm, I'm not going to add this up but I'm fairly confident that looks like it's roughly 285 in here 100, 160, yeah, it's, it's looking like it's heading up to 200, it's not a mile off anyway and then 500, yeah, you can see why that looks reasonable and looks as if it would be accurate and then we've got 790 work orders uh, D or defects open um, at the plant at this point in time. Now what we need to do is we need to be able to break this down into high, medium and low um, these numbers so that we can add them into a, a measure that then calculates the overall status for the site. So let's go and do that. So I've just added a new measure. So the first one is going to be to calculate the high risk um, work order so calculate the number of high risk work orders so we're going to use calculate and then we're going to calculate the the work order count current week but we're going to filter this for only work orders which have got a a post mitigation risk which is high okay so we're going to start with a post mitigation because I want to be able to just tie it back to these values here and then I am going to click OK here now let's just see what happens when we pull that into this table here And we can see that we added an additional filter here. So actually, even though this filter context is on high is fine because we've got high, but even though this filter tech context is medium and low, we're overwriting this filter context with from within using the calculate. So from within the me the measure, and this is going to be two, and this is going to be two. But that's fine. We're just looking at this for for illustration purposes just now. So I'm going to go and do the same for the medium and for the low risk and it's going to be pretty straightforward because we're just going to copy this and we're going to go and create a new measure for the medium risk and this will be this equal to two medium. I think that's fine. And we'll just pull this in here and make sure that looks okay. Yep, that looks fine. And then finally we're going to do the same again and we're going to create one for three, uh, three which is low. So this measure is going to calculate the number of work orders in the current week which are in the low risk group. So let's change that to low. And then let's click on here. And then we should see this low being 285. Okay, so we've got the values we need in here. So that is great. And we are ready now to move on and start to calculate the text that's going to represent the overall status of the plant.